Hello everybody, my name is Mike Guy, and in this video we are going to be looking at uh, adding movement and timing to the uh, the game project we began in our previous video. Okay, so what I have before me here is the result of the previous video. We have our ship object and our object.h, and then we have our knit ship and we have our draw ship. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to begin preparing for uh, keyboard input uh, and uh, uh, movement in the game. So uh, I'm going to go up here to our global variables. I'm going to create a new enumeration and I'm going to name that keys. And I am essentially looking for five different keys Look for up, down, left, right, and in this case, space. So I want to be able to fire my gun with the space key. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and create my keys array. Um, I am creating it globally um, basically because since I'm not using classes I want a way for uh, all my different functions to access keyboard input if it absolutely needs it. Uh, so while I'm not a big proponent of global variables um, sometimes you need those. So here we have our, our keyboard input uh, variables ready to go. So now scrolling down here uh, what I want to do is right uh, before initializing my ship, because I like to keep all the, the Allegro uh, code bunched together, I'm going to do al install keyboard and then I am going to uh, create my event queue so that I can be getting, uh, catching keyboard events. Come back up here to my Allegro variables. I'm going to type Allegro event queue. I put that wrong. Event queue named event queue. Equal to null. And then back down here, I can do event queue equals al create event. Fantastic. So we have our event queue created there. All right, and then what I want to do right down here after we initialize our ship, uh, we are going to al register event source register to event queue al get keyboard event source. All right, fantastic. Okay, so we've created our queue, we've initialized our keyboard, and now we've registered the keyboard to the, uh, to the event queue. And then down here inside my while loop, I'm going to do libro event ev and al wait for event, and I'll pass an event queue. So we have all the makings now for movement uh, in our game and basically what we want to do is when we push the key uh, we want the ship to move. Now what we can do is we can do all our updating code inside uh, the, the, uh, the, the switch statement or the nested if statement that we're going to create here. Uh, but instead I kind of want to extract that out and move that code into some functions uh, just so it's, it's better organized. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here, I'm going to create a few new functions here. I'm going to do void move ship up. That's going to take spaceship percent ship. I'm going to actually just copy and paste here a few times. Two, three, four. All right, so we're going to have move ship up, move ship down, move ship left, and move ship right. And the reason I'm extracting this out is because we want to do some bounds checking inside our movements, um, and it just becomes easier if we if we don't clutter up our, our our game loop code and we put that somewhere else that's a little bit easier to find in the future if we need to make any modifications. So I'm going to come down here and I'm just going to paste those headers, um, and then let's go ahead and look at 
the, the code we want to use here. So what I want to do is if we're moving the ship up, I want my y value to minus equals the ship's speed. Okay, so we're moving in the right y direction of the speed. And then I want to test. I want I want to make sure my ship does not go off the screen. So I want to do if ship dot y is smaller than zero. Alright, so if it's trying to go off the screen, then ship dot y equals zero instead. Okay, so that's our up bounds checking. Now let's do our bounds check, lower bounds checking, and we're gonna do ship dot y uh, plus equals speed. Ah, but ship dot speed. And then we're gonna say if ship dot y is greater than height, we are gonna do ship dot y equals height. Alright, great. Um, and similarly we're gonna do the left right. Now right's gonna be a little bit peculiar. We'll see that here in a second. I'm gonna do ship dot x minus equals ship dot speed. The way I'm doing it this way instead of using like a, a static number is so that I can adjust the speed in the, the initialization of the player uh, and then the ship can speed up and slow down and I'll have to come back here and change it in all these other locations. Um, if ship dot x is less than zero, ship dot x equals zero. Once again we don't want it to go off the screen. And then this one here, this is the, the slightly different one. I'm going to do ship dot x plus equals ship dot speed and then I'm going to say if ship dot x is greater than and now this is entirely up to me you know I can make the, the, the player go all the way to the other side of the screen but since it's a shooter game I kind of want to limit how far they can go so I'm going to say 300 that's completely arbitrary um, but 300 seemed alright for me so okay great we have now added in our movement so I'm going to come back up here now uh, to where we are in our game loop and I'm going to start uh, uh, checking for our events here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say if ev.type equals allegro event key down and this shouldn't be anything new to you guys, this should look pretty uh, familiar. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do switch and what am I switching? I'm switching ev.keyboard.keycode and I'm going to say case allegro key escape. This one I'm just going to add in here on the top. Done equals true. So now we have some way of getting out of our game. Break case allegro key up and in that case we're going to do keys up equals true uh, and I'm just going to actually copy this big component of copy paste do if allegro keys down then the array keys sub down Left, the array, keys, sub left, true, and finally, uh, case allegro, key, right. And then finally, for our space bar, it's allegro, key, space. And we're not actually going to do a whole lot with that yet. Uh, basically, we are going to be saving that for when we do our, our bullet firing, but, I, but I've added it in here now so we have it done. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this whole if statement and I'm going to type in else and then paste it. So else if, and now we're looking for Allegro key up event. And we're just going to come back through here and turn all these trues into falses. So now we know when our keys are down, we know when our keys are up. Fantastic. Great. So, save that. So now we have, we, we, we are reading the input from our keyboard, which is great, and now we need to actually, uh, we need to actually move our ship. So I'm going to do something along these lines. You're going to see, I'm, I'm going to do this real quick, and then I'm going to completely undo it. So, um, so take, take from that what you will. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do if Q 
keys so up move ship up pass and ship if and I'm actually just gonna copy paste that one more time there if keys down move ship down if keys left, move ship left. And if keys right, move ship right. Okay, fantastic. So let's go ahead and run this. Like before, when we didn't have timing, nothing's on the screen until I hit a key. And you see, we got that real blocky, non smooth movement. I can only go to 300 can only go to zero, which is just a little bit off the screen, but that's okay. I can go to zero there, and I can go to height. So fantastic. Keyboard is really unresponsive at this point because we don't have any timing, and everything doesn't, doesn't quite work the way we'd want it to uh, in an actual game. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and start adding the timing to our game. Uh, so I'm going to come back up here to, to, our, to our primitive variables, and I know I want to keep track of, of our redrawing, so I'm going to do uh, create my redraw variable there, and then I'm going to do a constant int frames per second equals to 60. So that won't change anywhere else, so great. And then after I create my event queue, I'm going to do Allegro timer, create our timer there, equal to null. Great. All right. Now that we have our timer variable, we're going to go ahead and create it. Timer equals al create timer, and we're going to do 1.0 divided by fps, so we get 1 60th of a second. We're going to registers and event source to our event queue. And we are going to pass in timer. All right. And the last thing we do right before we start our while loop is we are going to do al start timer. And we're going to pass in timer. Okay. So now our timer is started. And now we're going to modify our if statements inside here. We're going to do if ev dot type equals allegro event timer and now I'm going to change this to be an else if Perfect. Um, so if the event type is Allegro uh, event timer, oh one more thing I'm going to do too, I'm going to type in an else if um, ev.type equals Allegro event Display close, um, and I'm going to have to register that as an event source. Um, done. Is true. Basically, that line there just lets me press the red X. Let me come back up here and do AL register event source to our event queue, and I'm going to do AL get display event source. That's in display. All right, great. So I just wanted the users to be able to hit the red X if they wanted to. Okay, so coming back here to our Allegro timer, the very first thing we're going to do inside our Allegro timer is I'm going to do redraw equals true. So uh, that'll force our redraw. And then I'm going to come down here to these if statements I created before, and I'm going to cut those out by if statements, and I'm going to come back up here, and I'm going to dump them in here. Let me tabbing there. Perfect. Okay. So now our movement is being handled inside of the uh, inside of the, the timer update, uh, which means that it's only going to get run uh, 1 60th, or 60 times a second, or every 1 60th of a second. And the last thing I want to do down here is I want to change our drawing, when our drawing happens. So I'm going to do if redraw, and, and remember, we only want to draw 
when our vent queue is empty, al is vent queue empty. Pass in vent queue is empty. All right. Uh, if all that happens, this is what we're going to do. And inside here, we got our draw ship, our flip color, and our clear two color. Uh, if you keep these outside of this uh, if redraw, you're going to catch a flickering. All right, so these will all want to be grouped up inside here so you're not erasing and then having a black screen for a fraction of a second and then drawing again. All right, and then the last thing I want to do inside here is I want to redraw equals false. All right, great. So we've got our rendering set up uh, separate from our updating and our key inputs. So we're going to go ahead and run this. Okay, here we go. And you'll notice, look how much smoother that input is. Now it's, it's kind of bopping all over on the screen here for me because I'm I'm recording the screen as I'm as I'm doing this, so it's kind of chunking a little bit. But, um, but yeah, much more responsive, much quicker. You can see how that that seven uh, speed really makes the, the the avatar move pretty darn fast. And 300 is the furthest I want it to go. I can't go any further there, um, so that prevents me from getting too far forward on the screen. All right, so um, that uh, concludes the video on movement in our game as well as timing in our game because um, the two pretty much go hand in hand. Um, and in the next videos, we're going to look at uh, actually firing uh, off bullets. So uh, stay tuned for that.